Good evening, everyone. This is Neil with the Dastardly Gentleman, welcoming you to the Dastardly Gentleman podcast. With me, I have Jeremiah. Say hi. Hi. And I also have Frank here with us as well. Say hi, Frank. Well, hey, guys. <laughs> Frank's invisible because he's, you know, in in the podcast from the great beyond. <laughs> he's under my desk. <laughs> 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 pretty much, pretty much. And tonight we're going to be talking about uh, board games and tabletops. So. Yawn games. I heard Jeremiah's making a board game. I am. For like and five years. It's been more like seven or eight. But I mean, like, it's done. I just need to, like, stop being lazy and just kind of put everything together. Yeah, do you? You should probably yeah. do that so we can, you know, stack that paper and get them house. I uh, I kind of need somebody. <laughs> I also need somebody that can do 3D modeling, and I know a person that can do that, but he's not reliable. You actually know a couple of people that can do that. Okay, well, one of them is not reliable. The other person is probably busy. That is that is very true. See, <laughs> all the time. Pretty much all the time. Driving Frank. across country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll, that'll do it. <laughs> Frank, what's your favorite board game of all time? I mean, I'd say Clue, but it always ends in heartbreak. <laughs> um, wow. So probably I like I like uh, the Arkham Horror board game because okay. it's really good and it's super funny. Arkham Horror, what's that? Um, it's a it's a board game based on H.P. Lovecraft's um, Cthulhu Mythos, where you it's a it's actually a cooperative board game where you summon. He set up the board throughout um, Arkham and a bunch of different places that are in H.P. Uh, Lovecraft's various stories, and then you ha- are attempting to uh, seal all the portals that are showing up throughout Arkham, and then cross through and then defeat the elder one that's starting to be summoned which is picked at random Mm. and depending on which one it is it has different attributes like basically if like you if you pick cthulhu it's the game on super duper hard mode but like if you pick like um uh neopsis or whatever the hell's name is i can't remember oh neophrotep uh his uh it's substantially easier but it's like you you get to fight all the different critters that Lovecraft has ever talked about that come through portals and then you fight them and then you get items and every little part of the board has different things that happen to you like I was playing with Tara and she went to the bank and when you get there you get a uh, an event thing and the event thing said like the lady in front of the lady in front of you puts down a bag of of uh, uh, a pennies that she wants to deposit and begins to count them one by one and you lose uh, one psyche, so like she lost her mind, and it actually made her go crazy, and she actually had to roll to get out of the insane asylum because some lady was counting her shekels right in front of her, <laughs> which I, I found just disgustingly funny. That is pretty funny. Well, I can't play Clue because I always I lose friends over it. Yeah, are you like super anal about it? No, I'm just really good at it. Oh, I see. So, like, we start the game, I get to, like, the first room, and then I make a guess, and then the other person makes a guess, and then my next guess is right. And I don't even leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm usually, I usually manage to beat Clue within, like, five to ten turns, and it makes my wife go insane. Yeah, that'd probably piss me off, too. What's your favorite board game, Jer? Other than your own. Um... I used to really like playing Risk, but that was another one that like you lose friends over. Because it takes um, like three hundred years. True. Yeah, we used to we used to just play like over like a long like a week period. Um, but one that I've actually been playing the most recent one that I've been playing was uh, Ascension, which it's like a it's it's more of I guess like a card game than a board game, but I mean, it's, it's fun. Of- yeah, it's a little little column A, a little column B. Cool. Yeah, it's like TCG light. <laughs> yeah, it, a lot light, and it doesn't cost you a ton of money to get a whole bunch of cards for it. 
No, and they got the cute little expansion packs, and like it, it's just you get to still get the TCG experience without actually like <laughs> having to be like, well, I had to go online and I had to meta this deck so that I could get the sixty cards, and I spent ninety dollars on this particular card to to finally finish this deck. You got to do that. It's diet magic, half the time. Yeah, that's half cool. the money. I mean. <laughs> Magic the Gathering in, in general is I, I don't know probably one of my biggest money pits not so much anymore because I don't have anybody to play with <coughs> but you should try getting friends yeah I probably should but yeah I mean I if you're if you're a stickler for playing standard mode then yeah all your money goes away quickly very quickly very quickly all the money goes away. <laughs> Shut up, money bags. <laughs> I have all the special edition magic cards, and I've never even opened the box. No, I don't collect magic cards, loser. Oh, I'm the loser. One thing yeah. he doesn't collect. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to go jump in my storage unit full of special editions and roll around for a while. <laughs> my screen I played magic. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm so I, proud. I, I had to switch to Hearthstone because, you know. It's easier to take care of. I mean, like, you don't have to, like, you don't have to worry about, like, your cards getting damaged or, or some neckbeard swiping your deck whenever you go down to the card shop. Yeah, and I don't have to go down to the card shop and run into neckbeards. Yeah. <laughs> you don't even have to go outside or wear pants. I could do it while shitting, <laughs> which is half the time that I do play uh, Hearthstone. Seventy percent game. <laughs> so I think my favorite board game would probably be chess. <laughs> hey, that's respectable. You shut yeah, your mouth. I mean, like this is him just this is him just like blatantly trying to be sophisticated. <laughs> I just, I just I, I'm just gonna call him on it. I don't believe that at all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just don't. My favorite board game is hopscotch. So I actually, uh, stupid asshole. <laughs> I actually do like chess a lot. Anything um, could be a board game if you imagine. Ch no. Chess is the only game that you could probably play with just about anybody. You don't have to explain the rules to most people because they've already grown up on it or whatever. And it it's timeless. I mean, well, yeah. I mean, but it's like it's like playing Go or Chinese checkers or. I actually yeah. play chess with my neighbors once a week. Go over and play poker, and then when we're all done with that, I play against them a couple games of chess. It's fun. Cool. I like to get my I like to get my dad super drunk, so I have a snowball's chance in hell of winning. <laughs> like usually, like the the best way for me to win is I get him so drunk that he can't actually see the table anymore, and then I just move his pieces to the places I want him to be at. <laughs> that's advanced chess. That's our that's art of war level chess. That's Schick Chess, dude. No, Schick Chess is I just pick up the board and I dump all the pieces into my pockets and I just leave. <laughs> <laughs> These are mine now. <laughs> so when I was uh, a young lad, we had a uh, me and my brother had a tradition every Christmas of buying each other board games. Um, to name a few, uh, we. we 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 played a lot of Hero Quest. I don't know if you've ever played that one. It was basically just D and D light with an actual board game, like an actual board. Um, Battle Master. No Battle Masters. That game was awesome. It's basically the game that you're trying to make right now, Jer. Um, but you know, real. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, it's it's, so it's uh, basically the the board is is just a plastic mat, and I think it's like six by six, and it's all you know hexagonal spaces that you move your units to, and it's two armies <laughs> fighting each other, and you you know roll the dice and shit, and you're uh, you know destroy the other army. It's a pretty fun game. Uh, it usually goes pretty quick. So it's like a diet warhammer. Yeah, actually, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. 
and a lot less uh, expensive. <laughs> or, yeah, it was a game. I, I like. I, I never really got into playing the game. I just really got into doing the, um, the units. I, I really yeah. like painting them. Like, I found it very. I found it very relaxing. And but like the, like now that I move around for a living, trying to. Um, keep like the paint station and the paints and and then all the units and the drying stations and everything up. I'm like, nah, it's not gonna happen anymore. Especially since like I got kids and I have to live in apartments right now. The the expense and the space requirements for Warhammer are unbelievable. Atrocious. You need like an entire kitchen with no furniture. <laughs> like, I think whenever I finally get like a like an actual place to live in, I think that I'm probably gonna just have like a section of my garage dedicated to it, and then I'll start painting them again. Because like I don't, I don't, even, I don't even want to play the game. I just want to paint the figures. <laughs> I did play the game once with somebody else's figures, and it was pretty fun. I mean, yeah, it's fun. I've I've played it, but I did it at the poor version. I downloaded um like a PDF version of all the units and printed them out, and wow. played with that. Listen, I was a poor kid growing up. All right, <clears throat> I'm like still poor. Sounds like oh, this was like a couple weeks ago. I'm sure. <laughs> Sounds like some of the kids I know that would print out magic cards. See, I'm not that poor. I'll buy magic cards, <laughs> but I'm not paying forty dollars for a little teeny you figure. Print out, you got to print out magic cards in your top matrix printer back in the day. Bree, 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 bree. I got one. <laughs> okay, one. Now we got thirty more to go. Yep. I've actually. <laughs> I've actually known kids that legit print out magic cards and they try and play with them like. Like, it's kind of a surprise, because all of a sudden this bright white card shows up, and it's like a flimsy piece of paper. And they're like, okay, <laughs> I play this. I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> no, That's not sorry. a card. Like, Get the not, fuck not, out of here. Like, we're not super hardcore tournament rules, but I mean, like, you know, we do have some standards. <laughs> you can't be like, I print out every rare card, every legendary mythic card or whatever I can yeah. find for this amazing deck. I couldn't afford it, but, you know. It was a $5,000 deck, my friend. <laughs> Yeah, man, the, the whole like part of the whole point was you know you gotta catch them all, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like if you're just printing them out, you're like just kind of ruining like ninety percent of like what the game actually is supposed to be about, which is the uh, the frustration of not getting the fucking cards you want. <laughs> Pretty much, and then spending yeah. stupid amounts of money to get those cards. Yeah. I can do it yeah. like the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you plebeian trash, spend that money. <laughs> like. If you're going to do that, you better do a way better job of making it look legit. Like, I'll believe you. <laughs> um, my, um, my cousin used to go into uh, magic tournaments. And then one, one year, whenever he was really... Uh, this speaks volumes of my character. One year, whenever he was really like down on his luck and he really needed money to be able to have stuff like food and rent, I, I bought his entire magic card collection from him for like $15. Because <laughs> he couldn't find anybody else to buy it because none of his other friends were basically literate. And uh, <laughs> so I was like, well, I'll buy it for me for 15 bucks. He's like, dude, this is worth like a couple of hundred dollars. I was like, well, yeah, but I'll give you 15 bucks for it. <laughs> and so like, I ended up with like all these cards and he's super mad about it. And I don't give a fuck. He took that $15 and he bought Taco Bell for one night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, let's uh, let's talk about tabletops. Yeah, yeah. let's. You guys, uh, yeah, dude. You guys play any tabletops over there? Uh, I actually don't know that I've ever played a tabletop. Like I said, I, I painted the Warhammer stuff, but that's about as like as good as I've ever gotten. You did play one session of Vampire the Masquerade with me. Yeah, but is that really a tabletop? That's, fun. that's a tabletop. It's, yeah, it's a tabletop. It? It's like D and D. Kind of. I I but. really enjoy that because I love how ludicrous it gets. Yeah. Especially since like I I very I have very specific like things in mind. Especially never like with the with Vampire the Masquerade, I really enjoyed it because like I had a, a very specific character type in mind, and it was making me feel so incredibly frustrated. <laughs> nah, I'm just... gonna make you a vampire. Yeah, we'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> roll, 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 roll all sixes for stealth. Roll all sixes for subterfuge. God damn it! I wasn't frustrated at all. I mean, as a GM, I can fucking do whatever I want, but I, uh, I, I just let you do what you needed to do because it makes the story funny. 
But I yeah. did I did impose some rules on you. What, what was? Tell me about that time when you were trying to stealth in that cab with that old man. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna. Well, I was gonna. I wanted to do is I wanted to roll for stealth so that I could like lay on the floorboards in this cab with an old guy before I was even a vampire. I just wanted to sneak into the cab and like <laughs> just pretend like I didn't exist and pretend like I wasn't there and he was just gonna stare at me blankly like I like I wasn't part of the cab like I was part of the cab. You're like literally like three inches away from him going like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. don't, don't see me, don't see me, don't see me. Now I was gonna allow that as long as he could succeed at like a roll every five, ten minutes. Like <laughs> <'cause>, <laughs> He'll probably be looking out the window, looking around, and every now and then he'll look down, you know. So, if you could succeed. I, in my head, in my head, do you remember in the the Powerpuff Girls, the 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 Satan? Oh, yeah, him. him. That, that's what I, yeah, him, that's what I imagined, but like tucked under the floorboards, you know, just pretending <laughs> to not be seen. That's what oh. I had in my head like the whole time. A little floor mat just kind of half over your face, just your eyes over it. <laughs> I would have given you bonuses if you had like a blanket or something. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, no, that that's awesome, I, and that's that's what I promote. I mean, that's what I push anytime I'm GMing for VTM is just go with it, and eventually I will put you on the path where I want you to be. But I want some crazy rolls. I want some stupid shit happening. Like what happened when when Jeremiah tried to. Run away from uh, his sire in the Lake Havasu City, a uh, wash between the bowling alley and. Uh, <laughs> I got raped by a hobo. Oh no! And his feral wolves, <laughs> coyotes. But this was after stealing a bottle bottle of top shelf liquor from a bar, doing a crazy flip over a guard, and then ending up somehow face down, ass up in a wash. <laughs> So I, I feel like this is actually kind of like a normal like event for you. Like Except for like I have not a, that absurd. I have a home to go home to at the end of it. <laughs> the rest was based off true events. <laughs> yeah. The only difference was that you couldn't actually do a backflip. But everything else was actual, like factual. Oh yeah, I more of, it'd be more of like a graceful tumble. Nah. All right, a tumble. <laughs> <laughs> a slow I mean, roll. Like for at first, like you know, you stole the liquor, then you then you tried to do a tumble or or a jump, and then you had to send it up face down, ass up in the bar, and then they kick you out, and then you end up face down, ass up in the ditch. <laughs> As a parallelogram. <laughs> yeah. You got like the neck brace. <laughs> See, I I think that we should start recording our v, our VTM again because some of that shit was so good. I intended on. It. I mean, the, the problem is, is you know, finding time to do it. Um, I recorded that three-hour session with Frank, and <laughs> I was going to cut it down to about 20 minutes, but I'm like, God damn, that's so much stuff to cut down. <laughs> um, and I, I was really planning on making it, like, legit dramatic, but still with the comedy stuff in it. Like like the old radio dramas. Yeah, exactly like that. And, yeah. I mean, I'd love to do that. I mean, we just got to find time to do it, um, and schedules and whatnot, so... But, yeah, uh, that's something I'd like to do one day. And, shit, maybe even turn it into, like, a YouTube episode, you know, see, uh, show or whatever. I actually have a couple of friends right now that they record all their D&D campaigns, yeah. and they do kind of like that. They turn them into, like, a story, basically. Yeah. I mean, that's what I want to do. And, like I said, I also wanted to turn it into something live action. Maybe yeah. some, you know, amateur live action stuff. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you mean LARPing, Neil? You mean LARPing? No, I mean... Look at him, he's got the, he's got the suit already. <laughs> and I am in a classy bar. Yeah, with your dickies cut. <laughs> You'll be the first vampire to, to wear, a, wear a suit in a high-class bar and drink out of a dickies cup. Is that blood? No, no, Bloody Mary. <laughs> oh, I love Bloody Marys! It's a latte. <laughs> Cheesecake latte. That's why it's right. He's going to bust out his Blackberry and set up a dinner date, you know? No, <laughs> it's an iPhone and I have my MacBook. <laughs> I was trying to give you so much credit. But you just ruined it. <laughs> ruined. <laughs> I got to go.
No. Yeah, I don't want to be around him anymore either. You, you don't have anywhere to go. But no, as far as VTM's concerned, we there's all kinds of shenanigans. What happened? What happened when Kyle tried to run from the police? And he murdered those children. He murdered. I them. left his ass like downtown Havasu. I was like, I'm not. I'm not doing this. Well, yeah. See, so he's uh, he wanted a gun. So this is after hours. All the businesses are closed. So he goes to Sam's Shooter Emporium. And no, no, no. He wanted bullets. Oh, he wanted bullets. Yeah, he had a gun. Remember, he shot the window out. Oh no! I thought he threw. Did he? Oh, okay. I thought he threw a brick. Yeah, he or shot something. the window out, but he wanted more bullets for some <laughs> fucking reason. <laughs> so after he tried to seduce me. Yeah. Mind you. Yeah, he was yeah. kind of a whore. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so he shoots out the the windows in the in the gun store jumps in there grabs what he needs and then you know alarms going off cameras have just seen everything and he, uh, the cops start chasing him and apparently he's a really good driver he put like all his points into like being able to drive and like blend in and shit yeah so jer he's like you know what? fuck this jumps in his sewer <laughs> I, I fucking bailed out. I'm like, like no, you, you have fun with this. I'm done. And I just rolled into like a sewer. Because he's a Nosferatu and they can't... They they, they dwell in the sewers. So yeah, man. he's like, fuck that. Ninja Turtles, boom. So, I, so, and, that, and that was Kyle? <laughs> no, that was Jer. No, that was, was me. Say, like, I'm, I'm like, I know, I know Kyle's a Nosferatu, but what was he in the game? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Don't do that. No, he was a Torador, I think. Yeah, that sounds uh, right. Dude, it's uh, all about the Zamiti. Yeah, but that's you know more Sabat. But they're uh, they're legitimately like the, the 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 clan closest to my heart. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I mean you you would make a good Zamiti. But so anyway, so he gets in the car, starts running from the cops, and he, <laughs> you know this is he's, probably, the sun's coming up. By yeah, the way, this is like four thirty five o'clock in the morning. And he's, like, evading the cops. And eventually, you know, he has to find a place to lie, lie low for the day. And he uh, finds a garage door just open because these, these uh, people are getting ready for work and shit and getting ready for school. Sneaks in there, kills the husband, lay, leaves him laying on the floor. Then the wife discovers him. No, he, he goes uh, and he finds the kids first. Remember, he finds them laying in bed, the kids in bed. And then he goes and he finds the wife because he hears the wife in the bathroom down the hall. And he goes up and he goes up behind this girl. <laughs> doesn't he like grab, doesn't he like cover her mouth and be like, hey, I want to show you something? Yeah, and he shows her the dead kids. <laughs> no, 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 he shows, he shows her her husband dead. Oh. And then he kills her. <laughs> she almost gets away. And like, cause he bo- doesn't he be he, botched like his bite or something, and like just like ripped her head off. Basically. Yeah, he uh, botched a couple rolls there. Uh, for you know any rolls to botch, he fucking botches that shit. So, he and then he goes into the kid's bedroom, kills them in their sleep, <laughs> shoots them both <laughs> in their sleep, and then he goes oh and hides God. underneath the bed for the day. And that's where we left off. We haven't picked up from there yet. <laughs> yeah, I think it'd be fun. It'd be fun to pick it back up, like just start like a whole new fresh game. Like now that you know, I kind of know what we're doing, talking about, etc. And then actually get like a, a game going. Yeah, I mean, it would, we would have to dedicate like about the same time you dedicate to a raid. Raids are canceled. <laughs> yeah, BTM yeah. only. But no, I'd be I'd be <laughs> happy to do that. Just time, but. I tried playing D and don't know if you guys have played D and D at all. I used to play D and D a lot in high school. It's Never boring. Played it. So boring. It's fun. It's like VTM if you like have somebody who's not a boring DM because like it, it the Stare. whole <laughs> the whole thing relies on having a DM that's like not boring and that can make things interesting and kind of like pull the story along. There's just more combat and rolling and math. I mean, that's Which, what what's, what makes it so boring is the, the rolling. I mean, combat, like, especially in early stages of the game when your character is basically, you know, a normal person, you miss so much. Roll, miss, roll, miss. Fuck, goddamn, like, all night we're long. Talking, we're talking about D&D or we're talking about VTM? D&D. D&D. Oh, okay. 
because VTM's uh, uh, a dice, lot more lenient, really. Well, it, it's it's <laughs> it's one or the other with VTM. Either you succeed or you don't, and you're either succeeding by a lot or a little, or you're failing by a little bit or a lot. So it's either a botch or a critical success. And those were, is where you get like the uh, really interesting story to go along. Like when you go to try and bite somebody and you literally tear their neck off on accident because you botched the roll or something. Oops. Um, but with with D and D, you're like, okay, roll to see if you hit the guy. Okay, you hit the guy. Now roll to see how much damage you just did. You did one yep. damage. Okay. Now, now I'm gonna turn. roll to see what they do back, and yeah, it's just that back and forth. Which I mean, it can be fun, but a lot of that stuff does get really repetitive. Yeah, and and there's a lot less role play in, in D and I mean, it's more about the combat. It's more about the the quest, yeah. and so you can't. It's a lot more difficult to talk your way out of a situation. You have to it, do well, everything. Or, he had me at this this strip club, and then he he was really trying really hard to to make some rather illogical leaps to me being abducted and then turned into a vampire, of which I the majority of which I evaded with hilarious consequences, like convincing a the bartender attempts to rat me out, and then I convince one of the bar patrons to murder the bartender. And in the process of murdering the bartender, he doesn't. He's not able to murder the bartender, but the bartender botches the defense and then disarms the the patron and then falls on the knife. So I'm like, same, same. He still died. <laughs> I'm like, it's yeah. whatever. I mean, there's dead bodies and blood everywhere. I'm pretty much okay. <laughs> it ain't me. <clears throat> but yeah, that's 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 the kind of issue I'm ta- talking about. I mean, anything can happen. It's it's not just damage, it's... Oh, he slipped slipped and fell on a knife, so... It's good stuff. Yeah, when I, I did... Like yeah, when I did D&D, we did a lot of, like, roleplay stuff in it, too. Like, one of the my favorite characters that I played was a halfling thief. But I was basically, like, insane. And the DM would randomly, like, pass notes under the table to me, like, telling me to do things. Like... To like fuck my the party that I was in, like to k- get people killed, and if I like gave in or whatever, like I'd have to like roll, like to fight it, like if I was gonna fight it. Yeah. And like it it was so funny because like there was just some stuff where like I would the one thing I remember most was that we were invading like a goblin stronghold and like we're super far in this thing and like we're kind of sneaking our way through it, and he passes me this note and he goes. Um, basically it's like it basically is like an old god whispering to me like telling me to pull an alarm and to just hide in the shadows and watch everyone die and I tried to roll against it and I botched it so bad that I just ended up going over flipping the alarm and then just standing there <laughs> and just letting it all happen and we all ended up dying because of it nice but it was it was fun it was a good it was a good laugh yeah dude if you play it just by the books and you're just like, okay, you're in a hallway, there's a goblin, roll for initiative. That shit's boring. Yeah. And then like Pathfinder. Pathfinder is like the exact same thing as D and D. I never really did a lot of the pen and paper stuff, but since like Neil had me do the one session of uh, VTM, like I'm I'm I have renewed interest in it, or I should say I have new interest in it. Um, but you know, it, it's about like the time, like yeah. to to be able to dedicate to it, which I just don't. Quite have enough of. Yeah. Do like brief, brief little like thirty minute sessions. Be like, ah, then I killed a girl, and then I left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep. you can't, you can't be doing that. No, you, you have to have a, like a single night can take like four or five hours, and mm-hmm. uh, you have to, you have to, you can't really leave in the middle of a night. I mean, even though you and me did, but that's because you know we were three and a half hours in, and we just couldn't fucking do it anymore <laughs> yeah I mean, we had work in the morning it was yeah like you had to kind of go do things yeah <laughs> so you, you want to leave in in the intervals between where people are sleeping so that it's easy to pick up from i mean that's one of the better reasons for um recording the sessions is so you can go back and listen to the last five minutes or so and um you know figure out where you left off or if anybody was saying 
Saying, oh no, that didn't happen. Bitch, I got the recording right here. Yeah. On the last time in VTM. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, there's going to be a lot of that. I mean, like, I also feel like a lot better about, like, our, um, our recording capabilities and our, and our, you know, production quality since the first, the first installment. So I think that, like, performance wise, we'd probably be substantially better. I agree. I completely agree. Says the guy with the shittiest microphone on the planet. Shut up. <laughs> Better than yours. Where's right your now? microphone, Frank? You don't sound like the typical smooth voiced Frank. You mean like the normal the normal high quality? And yes. the and yet and yet this this borrowed Samsung headset probably still sounds better than your microphone. My Beatles rock band mic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you guys have any uh board game stories or tabletop stories you might want to share that were uh, particularly oh, okay. entertaining. Much, the majority of mine are all with the uh, the VTM and that, you know, I almost got shot over a game of Clue. <laughs> you uh, probably deserved it. I, I did. It was, uh, you know, yeah, there was some arrogance involved and a lot of liquor and some guns. <laughs> I, I ironically like you know the 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 candlestick in the hall was not really gonna be my uh, my murder of choice. It was gonna be the uh, semi-automatic in the living room. So <laughs> shouldn't bring a candlestick to a gunfight, son. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, I actually have a story, but it's not really regarding me. It's like the first time I ever st- stepped foot in like a serious like card shop board game type store. Sure. Uh, when I very first moved up to Idaho, I went to a um, it was like a, it was an, it's called All About Games. They do like board games and Warhammer, Magic, and like every card game that you could possibly imagine. They've got thousands of different varieties of games and whatnot. And they've got an area set up in the back where you can come in and you can play Warhammer or, in this instance, My Little Pony Monopoly. Uh, <laughs> So I go in and I. <laughs> so so sexy. I'm sorry. Just go ahead. <laughs> I need you. I need you. To, I need you to talk real fast. <laughs> okay. And um, so I go in and I just went in to like look at um, some of the Warhammer figures, stuff like that. Like I'm working on my board games, so I'm kind of trying to get some ideas and stuff. And I walk in, and I felt super uncomfortable walking in. Like I'm pretty nerdy as is, but like when I walked in, I could just feel my virginity coming back to me (laughs) and I'm just like sitting there and I'm like, all right. And like, it's just got this pungent nerd smell just wafting through the building. And I'm kind of standing over there and I'm looking at some stuff and there's, there's people playing Warhammer. And like I said, there's this big group of like probably 40 year old men playing my little pony monopoly. (laughs) And I'm just standing there and at a card shop. (laughs) At a card shop. That's sad. Go ahead. And uh, I look, I look over at the door, and I see a red minivan pull up, and I see these three guys get out. They're probably <laughs> like late thirties, and they're all wearing trench coats. And I could, I could hear the guy say, "Okay, bye, mom. Pe- see you in a couple hours." And then she, and then they drive up. I couldn't see who was in, like I couldn't see the person in the driver's seat. So these three nerds. There's a guy in the middle, and like he's probably like their leader or whatever. He's kind of short fat wearing this big trench coat he's got his hair slicked back super (laughs) greasy he's the alpha weeb oh yeah and he's got like these big (laughs) thick glasses and he's got something on his arm and i can't tell what it is and there's the two other guys that are behind him there's like this tall lanky dude like equally balding equally aged man and then like a kid that looks like he was actually of age to be in this card shop they're all wearing black trench coats and they all go walking and this guy fucking walks through the door and he kicks it in like he fucking owns this place and he f- <laughs> he throws his arm like in a fist straight up in the air and he's got a Yu-Gi-Oh dual disc thing on his fucking arm <laughs> and he yells who's ready to did it did it duel God damn it. and the fucking crowd of people there had to been like 20 people in the back just erupts in cheering like they're like so stoked for this dude to be there. And I'm over there, like, I've got this Warhammer figure in my hand, and I like, put it up, and I'm like, I need to find a way out. I need to find a way out now. 
And like I'm just sitting there and I'm like, oh God, oh God, oh God. And then Jordan walks in right behind them after they go and they get at their table. And the whole place gets dead silent. And I hear people go, oh my God, is that a girl? There's a girl in here. Uh-huh. Guys, guys. Shh, shh, shh. It's a girl. It's a girl. Shh, shh. And I see a guy like kind of like move his hair back a little bit. And like she walks up to him I'm like, we need to leave now. And she's like, why? And I'm like, just go, go, go. And we got out. And I mean, I, I, I've, never been, I've never been back. I won't ever go back. I can't. Hey, you, you will. See, that's I'll why. Take I, you. <laughs> that's why I don't ever go to card shops. I mean, I can't. That's what. That's what steers me away from like comic cons and stuff too. I'm concerned yeah, I'll run that. into that shit. I love. I love that. <clears throat> I, I love that because like, I am already super arrogant, and I love having proof of it. You know, because like <laughs> you walk in, you you know. Because like we, go, we went to this card shop in uh, Louisiana, and then we went to Louisiana Comic Con, and uh, like I walk into the card shop, and there were these guys that were over there, and they were playing. They, it was pretty much just the exact same thing that Jared was just talking, talking about, where they got their their Yu Gi Oh and whatever that they're playing, and uh, like I walk in, and they don't really think much about it, but then like Tara, and then like my kids immediately like walk in after me, and and they're like they're like. <laughs> and like Tara, Tara's like because there was another group that was playing Warhammer and Tara walks in and goes oh you guys are playing Warhammer that's awesome and she starts trying to like ask him questions and talk to him and like they all just lock up I'm <laughs> just like I love what is happening right now I love how uncomfortable you are and it's it's like whenever I went to you know the Comic Con and there was like it was the same thing and and there was the the big group of weebs that are over there that are all fighting over the the foam the foam uh, sword art online swords and you know then they've got this the the Warcraft warglave up there that's like at this position of reverence and uh, and I'm like and they're like they're like oh that thing's so amazing and I was just like I'll take that <laughs> they're like they're like well it's it doesn't matter I'll take that one. And I'm like, do you have another one? Well, no. I'm like, oh, that's too bad because I was gonna buy two. And then everyone's like, Ooh. I'm like, suck my dick, nerds. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, I wanted, to stuff... buy, I wanted to buy all the Sword Art Online like foam swords, and then just be like, be like, here you go, guys, and just like make it rain on them with all these foam swords. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Make it so rain. <laughs> make it rain. That's actual like... swords. <laughs> That's that's one of those things that like a lot of a lot of the people that are into that stuff, I feel are kind of like that. Unfortunately, like I've I've played a couple magic tournaments up here, and um, the first one that I ever went to, the guy that sat across from me was like five six hundred pounds, wearing a My Little Pony shirt that is just covered in like pizza grease. He has an entire Little Caesars pizza and a, like a two liter that he's that are like next to him and he's sitting there and like he's touching his cards as he's playing and it's leaving a visible film uh, on the cards be, and I sat down and he puts his hand out to shake my hand and I'm like mm, that ain't happening this bump dude <laughs> and I'm I wouldn't even do that dude and I was like I was like if you need to if you need to tap my cards I was like just point don't don't fucking touch any of my cards please so just like, don't like for as far as TCG goes like I've, I've only really played magic and, uh, I technically played Hearthstone for bit but there was another game um my friend whenever i was growing up my friend was uh my friend's mom wouldn't let him play magic because she was like super religious uh, but then um they the the local bible shop around here started selling these um cards that were like it was basically magic but with biblical characters and i was like sure i'll buy some because you know no it's fine it's whatever because like you know I, I dig that not everybody's into it or whatever or sure. they have different so whatever we, we still get the the joy of playing the tcg so like I, I bought the cards for it and they started uh wanting to play in uh like the church that he went to and i got the cards so i could play with him and then we played here and then he's like well, let's go play at the church i'm like okay cool that's fine whatever and so i went to his church and we started playing i got kicked out of his church because that doesn't surprise me at all. <laughs> we're playing this game, and I'm playing the game as intended, and I had fucking Joseph of Arimathea was so fucking... I, I buffed him so many times that he could literally one-shot Jesus Christ. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, I'm saving the shit out of you guys. You guys don't even know. And they kicked me out. Uh-huh. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's hilarious. Oh wow. I made Satan very powerful. I just I didn't even mean to. It just it worked out. Look, you know, it's like Hearthstone. The cards just came out, and I was just like, okay, I got Satan. They got the mana for it, so tap, you know, mana. <laughs> the, you keep putting, you know, what I can't remember what the the buff was, but you know, I just kept you can't put those one one Roman soldiers on the field, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> but I just kept buffing them up, and then like, I had Satan just destroying all the saints. <laughs> he was just wrecking them. It was wonderful because I won. You know, it was all about the win. It's not about the theme, and for them, it's all about the theme and not the win. I'm like, no, I'm gonna win because yeah. I'm a horrible person. <laughs> you see a Satan card? This is basically me. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Neil? What's your favorite funny game story? If you got one, I mean, you're pretty boring. I'm pretty boring. Um... The end. <laughs> I sometimes like playing life and pretending that I actually have one. <laughs> I don't Every know. spin puts me into the nursing home. I don't know why <laughs> this thing's broken. <laughs> Play baccarat. Um, I would say that it's not in- incredibly entertaining, but um, most fun I had was when I was playing VTM. And I was playing with my old group of friends that I don't talk to that much anymore. And uh, basically, I needed some solid income. So I would go to uh, this neighborhood, which I called Whore Island. Um, it was basically like You're the welcome. red. <laughs> it was basically <laughs> like the red light district. And I had to search for the, uh, the head pimp. The guy over there making all the money. Mm-hmm. Killed that guy. Took took all of his clothes. Had a fur coat on and a scepter. And, uh, you know, popped open his uh, cell phone because it was a flip phone. <laughs> and uh, called up all his hoes. Had them all line up. And uh, basically had to tell him, hey, I'm in charge now. Anybody have a problem with that? Every single one of them, with the exception of one, said, Nah, man, that guy used to beat us. Are you going to beat us? I'm like, Well, I need to. No, yeah. The obvious answer is just yes. <coughs> well, you just roll up with a rug and one <laughs> arm and just kind of look at it and then look back at him. But, but like, one of one of the prostitutes, she came up to me and she's like, you know what, I don't like your attitude. And she clocks me right in the face and I botch every single roll. And I'm a vampire at the time. I mean, I've, I've got special powers and shit. And she beats the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> this friggin' hoe bag is beating my ass. <laughs> I have to call in for help. <laughs> Phone a friend. <laughs> Basically, you so... That's life alert. <clears throat> So my uh, my group comes in to help me out, and uh, we end up taking her back to a warehouse uh, because we kind of want her to be our friend at that point because she's pretty <laughs> fucking strong. So we're, we're thinking about turning her, but you know she's not having none of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we're we're at this time we're just trying to kill her, and she's you know winning every roll, and we're botching every roll, and she, she like takes out three vampires. With her fucking long ass nails and her weave and shit. <laughs> Hold my hoops, girl. <laughs> so she ain't taking no prisoners. <laughs> she she's fucking wrecking everybody. And this is one of the things I like about the VTM the most is like rolls like that. You can be so unlucky that you get your ass beat by some random hoe bag. <laughs> like I think one of our characters ended up like frenzying because they ran out of blood trying to use powers to kill her so we had to we had to lock that person in a room and ran away because when when you're frenzied as a vampire you are a killing machine you you lose control of your character and you just kill everything in sight so we we locked her in a room in a basement and just fucking got the hell out <laughs> should have thrown the prostitute in there to take care of it um <laughs> you're right we actually did. She's all just punched. <laughs> did she win? 
<laughs> like we forced her into that room, locked it, and got the hell out. <laughs> and we're like, we'll deal with that later. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the things I love about being as an ET, because like I, I was very successful like all of the rooms. Like I was, I was hitting impossible odds. I would have loved to have been there and been like, oh, let's just beat the crap out of Neil. I literally turn her inside out. <laughs> Just like on the spot, just warp, 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 and then she turns into like a, like a pus steaming pile of like Titan goo. It would make I me very happy. I would have just watched and let it happen and took pictures and put it all over little vampire social media. Yeah, I know, but like if I have the opportunity to kill someone, I'm going to. Like even the like if if like you know like like you like it's like you me and Neil are in a room and you're like. Hold on, let me get this cup, and then you turn around and grab a cup, and you turn back around, and like you know, Neil's turned into Glenn. You know, I mean, like <laughs> that's like, that's those are the opportunities I look for. So Neil would become a vampire bat. <laughs> no, <laughs> I see what you did there. Well, folks, that's the show. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you experienced, please give us a like, subscribe. Uh, rate us five stars. Donate on Patreon so Jeremiah can buy a real microphone. <laughs> uh, yeah. Follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. And Instagram. And Instagram. Or just, uh, you know, send us an email. Mail at dastardlygentleman.com. Sorry about the uh, the break we had. Our good buddy Kyle got married and we all you know, decided to go visit him for his marriage. Yeah, he <clears throat> Yeah. So, uh, we'll be keeping those podcasts coming. For the most part, anyways. We'll we're back to one. normal. Yeah, we're back to normal now. Until probably the holidays or something. <clears throat> uh, so we'll have a new one out pretty soon. Uh, but until next time, we'll see you later.